As the icy winds of Yela swept over the landscape, JB peeled his eyes open, finding himself sprawled out amidst the verse Capo Cruz customary morning chaos. The gang had been over at Moon Yella in the Crusader system, banging heads and grabbing loot. Their activities for the morning had died down. Chloe was fiddling with a busted engine part, while Rebellious was preoccupied with, of all things, baking. As for Wraith, the newest member of the Verse Capo crew, he was busy polishing his shiny Eclipse, his favourite ship. Wraith excelled at being unseen. He was so sneaky he'd sooner romance the silhouette of a supermodel than the model herself. Wraith was a phantom, a whisper, a cold breeze in a hot room. His presence was as detectable as a chameleon in a bag of Skittles. As JB made his way towards the motley crew, a medical beacon blinked onto his HUD. It belonged to a hapless star citizen, marooned and in dire straits. Yes, the Verse Capo crew were notorious pirates, known to liberate traders from their burdensome cargo. But when a fellow citizen was in need, they were there faster than a grandma at a bingo hall. Without skipping a beat, the Verse Capo crew leapt into JB's Drake Corsair, the veritable Swiss army knife of the stars. And in JB's opinion, best ship in the game. Their destination was the moon of Aberdeen, which held within its depths a cave that had swallowed up the unfortunate citizen. Upon arrival, they found two lone ships, a cutty black and a drake cutter, looking more out of place than a porcupine at a balloon store. JB, Wraith and Koi split okay. up, conducting a rapid but thorough examination of the suspicious vessels. JB swung open the cutter, revealing nothing but empty space. Wraith, ever the shadow, slipped into the cutty black without a sound, while Quay, the crew's sharp-eyed hawk, kept watch from the Corsair's top deck, weapon in hand, um, ready to pop baby. open the skull of anyone who showed themselves. With the ships clear, they made their way out, but just as they prepared to descend into the depths, a grim update flashed across their screens. The distressed citizen had expired. Unknown causes, a grim outcome, but a reminder of the perils they faced. Despite the tragedy, curiosity tugged at JB's adventurous heart. After all, he'd never spelunked before. So, with a collective nod, they plunged into the cave, their path lit only by the occasional flash of their torches. The cave was a gothic cathedral of rock, replete with twisted stalagmites and echoing silence. Here and there lay the still forms of NPCs, a breadcrumb trail leading ever deeper. They gingerly followed the path, half expecting to encounter some cave-dwelling beast. But with each passing step, the cave's novelty was giving way to monotony. It was less Indiana Jones and more endless cave of absolutely nothing. Eventually, they shrugged at each other, deciding to cut their losses and head back. This is how you get lost. As they emerged from the cave, blinking in the harsh light of Aberdeen, they couldn't shake off the feeling of relief. They climbed back aboard their Corsair, setting course for Microtech. Their rescue, turned caving adventure, was now a story for their scrapbook. The Corsair's engines hummed as JB charted course for Ghost Hollow. His corsair dwarfed Ghost Hollow like a hippo gate, crashing a hamster's tea party. He spotted a tiny arrow fighter perched on the ground and dispensed with it as easily as swatting a lazy fly. I think he's parked it behind something. Yeah, he has. <laughs> As the Corsair gently kissed the dirt, JB was convinced he'd spotted signs of life. Well, not so much life, as someone playing hide-and-seek within a ship the size of a small building. Aside from the wings, yeah, I can cover pretty much end-to-end for -end Ghost Hollow. With Wraith covering his back from the turret, and Quay keeping a bird's-eye view and keeping the NPCs at bay, JB decided to stroll into the belly of the beast, via the gigantic Reclaimer's nose entrance. In hindsight, it wasn't the wisest move, and he knew that that entrance was as camped as a national park in the summer holidays. 
None of these markers are moving. JB, always one for a challenge, and the content, let's not forget the sweet, sweet content, decided to roll the dice. I'm going to come with you. Predictably, JB found himself flat on his back faster than a fainting goat. The only difference, goats don't get shot at the top of ladders. Wraith, in an impressively futile attempt to rescue his captain, was sniped out of action before he could even launch a proper rescue. The verse Capo's venture at Ghost Hollow had been about as successful as a chocolate teapot, but JB, his ego bruised but determination unscathed, decided a dash of revenge would spice up the situation. Back at Port Tressler, Wraith was obsessing over a few little scratches and specks of space dust on his eclipse. Evidently, he was the sort of guy who'd send back a cheeseburger for having too many sesame seeds. Meanwhile, Koi was pressed for time due to an imminent date with his true love, a two-wheeled beauty of a motorbike. He did, however, spare a few moments to drop JB back on the ground before zooming off. Go. There he was, JB, stranded on the barren surface of Ghost Hollow, ready to take on his nemesis. The adrenaline pumped in his veins as he set off to avenge his crew's honour, with nothing but his trusty gun and a bucket load of determination. Now it was a personal affair. Time to show these scoundrels what the Verse Capo crew was really made of. With the precision of a cat stalking its prey, JB navigated the harsh terrain, utilising the cacophony of an approaching ship as his own personal soundtrack. It was the perfect cover to enter the Reclaimer, this time not through the proverbial front door, but the less trodden back alley. Once inside, JB was a man possessed. The cold, hard numbers of the countdown display glared back at him. It was a race against time, and he was going for gold. Seconds trickled away like sand through his fingers, every tick of the clock amplified in the silence of the reclaimer's belly. He arrived at the terminal with the countdown digits dwindling down to their final breaths. It was as if time itself was playing a cruel game, mocking his very effort. Yet, under pressure, JB shone. Like a pianist nailing a crescendo, his fingers danced across the terminal, halting the money transfer in the nick of time. With a wicked grin, he initiated a new process, rerouting the digital stream of credits into the verse Capo's treasure chest. His heart pounded in his chest like a heavy metal drummer, echoing the triumphant rhythm of victory. Unseen in the darkened corners of the Reclaimer, JB celebrated the smallest of victories in the ongoing saga of Ghost Hollow. He'd made a dent, a mark, Revenge, as they say, was a dish best served cold, and JB had just opened the fridge. JB's senses were heightened, his mind in a heightened state of alert. He felt the vibrations of each step that echoed through the metallic belly of the reclaimer, like a predatory beast stalking its prey. It was the unmistakable sound of heavy boots on cold steel. It was the sound of incoming danger. A wry smile played on his lips, a ninja in heavy armour, how quaint he thought. But Jay B knew better than to underestimate his opponent. His actions earlier would have surely set off the proverbial alarm bells. It was time to fortify his position and brace for the incoming storm. With the steely resolve of a seasoned warrior, he struck down the first wave of intruders with unyielding force. Good luck. Two down, but he knew how many left to go. 
His fingers dance on the terminal again, setting the transfer process back in motion. He could almost hear the virtual coins clinking into their digital piggy bank back home. Time passed in an eerie silence. The clock was his only companion, ticking away the seconds like a metronome in an empty concert hall. But JB wasn't alone. He knew better. He was like a panther in the night, waiting for the rustling in the night, waiting for the rustling in the underbrush, the sign of his next adversary. His patience wasn't in vain. The telltale sounds of another incoming threat reached his ears. The adrenaline coursing through his veins kicked up a notch. It was time for round two. Who said playing the hero was easy? But then again, JB was no ordinary hero. He was a verse capo, and they never backed down from a fight. Victorious, but not one to gloat, JB took one last look around the grim interior of the Reclaimer. A satisfied smile crept onto his face, not for the victory itself, but for the justice served. Every corner, every shadowy nook held stories of a hard-won battle, memories of a fight well fought. The honour of the verse Capo had been avenged, the balance set right in their world once more. Revenge had been served, wealth had been secured, and the verse Capo crew's honour restored. The starscape that stretched out before him seemed a little brighter, his digital universe a little richer. Thus ended another thrilling day in the life of JB and the Verse Capo crew. A day of struggle, of victory, and above all, a testament to the indomitable spirit of a true Verse Capo. As the saying goes, the sun never sets on a badass. And Verse Capo, ladies and gentlemen, is one heck of a badass.